Okay, today I've got Hannah Summer from the band Gray, and we're going to be talking about their latest album, Under the Weather, and hopefully some good stories about recording that in Muscle Shoals, Alabama, and some other stuff coming up on their plate. So welcome to the show, Hannah. Thank you so much for having me. It's great to be here. Hey, you bet. You know what's cool is I've been looking at your videos on YouTube, and you guys have a really cool just live on-stage presence, and it uh, seems like you've played a lot of shows at the Hard Rock. Yes, we have. Yep, our uh, our Hard Rock here in Daytona uh, just opened up. Well, I, I suppose it's been a, a year or so now, and it's a great venue. Always, always super responsive, excited audiences. It's one of our favorite places to play. Well, for bands, it's really cool to have a home base. It sounds like you guys have established yourself in that area, Daytona Beach. Is Hard Rock becoming to feel kind of like a home base for you guys? Yeah, definitely. We're there at least once or twice a month, uh, if not more. And it's definitely definitely feels like home. They're very welcoming there. And again, like I said, the audiences are always just great. Well, that's what's cool, too, is even though you guys do videos, I was really compelled by your live videos, and it just seems like you guys really get to hone your sound with both your original songs, but you also perform some really cool covers, too. Um, Kind of explain, like, what would it be like to go to your show? Is it a mix of original and covers at this point? Yeah, it's it's a, about a 50-50 split most of the time, uh, just depending on what the venue asks of us. But most of the time, it's about 50-50, and it's uh, originals from all five, soon to be six, of our albums, as well as some covers from uh, people like Heart, uh, Yes, CSN, the, the list goes on and on and on. So it's a, it's a cool mix of stuff, for sure. Well, what's cool is hearing you guys, you know, you have some middle-of-the-road stuff, and then you turn on your video for Barracuda. And I was pretty <laughs> blown away because that's pretty gutsy of you to, you know, sing some Ann Wilson. And I thought you really held your own on that. Well, thank you very much. It was definitely not without lots of practice, um, but it, it's a fun song. It's probably my favorite cover that we do live now because it just gets such a great response from the audience. Everybody knows it, so. Well, one thing about your uh, band, Gray, is that you're, you're kind of a rock band on the surface, but with a lot of influences kind of bubbling under the surface. If you really had to narrow it down, I mean, what what genre would you call the band? I would say indie rock pretty much encapsulates, encapsulates uh, everything. Cause we've, we've got some folk influences, some prog rock influences, a little bit of maybe some country, country rock in there. So I'd, I'd say indie rock. Well, when you guys did your last album, Under the Weather, which you went up to, I mean, I mean this, to people in the know, everyone knows how legendary Muscle Shoals Alabama is, but especially you recorded this at a famous studio that happens to be called Fame Recording Studios, and it was produced by... Brian Reeves, uh, I'm just real curious, what led you guys to record that there, and how did all this come about? Well, it all started a very long time ago, actually. The fir- I think it was the first Christmas that we were together, right before the first Christmas we were together. Um, one of our local like indie theaters was showing the documentary about Muscle Shoals and about mm-hmm. Rick Hall and his life and how he came to build fame and all of that. And we all went to see it together as a band and thought, oh, you know, wouldn't it be cool one day to, to visit that studio? And then, you know, the the thought of recording there was, was just a dream at that point. And uh, let's see, it would have been, you know, five or six years later that uh, our manager took a trip there. And it, we found out, you know, it's still a working studio and they came back from that trip and said, Hey guys, we're, uh, we've got three days booked and that's where we're going to do this record. And it was, it was truly seeing the dream become reality. It was really, really amazing. Yeah. I was talking to somebody recently about recording in Nashville and just how special that is. What's it like in muscle, uh, muscle shoals? Is it that same thing of, are you just absorbing all that history when you go there? 
Oh, yeah. I mean, it's so amazing because everything is still the same. You know, they still have the same Wurlitzer that's been on every record, all the same Leslie's, the same. Everything is still the same. Um, So there's such a a history and such a wonderful, warm energy in that room. And it's just, it's really an experience. You can almost feel Rick Hall smiling down on you while you're working in there. (laughs) Now, he passed away last year. Um, did you actually get to meet him uh, before he died? No, no, he passed. I, it was like a couple weeks before we left. Um, and he was in pretty poor health from what I understand before we got up there. So we probably wouldn't have gotten to meet him even then if he had, you know, stayed around long enough for us to get there. So it was it was very sad um, that we didn't ever get to meet him, but... But like I said, definitely so feel be, that, that energy there. Right. And, and at least you get to be part of that legacy of the studio, which, um, oh, yeah. I mean, you, and you guys have a pretty full band, but um, is the Muscle Shoals Rhythm section still around? Were they part of the studio? Uh, not while we were there. And, you know, I don't know that I, – I think they are. I think you can still hire those guys to do your session if you want. Um, but they weren't there when we were there. Okay. Now, of your band, I mean, you guys got your five-member band, I think, and and I hope I get this right. I want to at least mention everyone while you're on here. Uh, Jet Wolf, uh, Joshua Reed, Ray Grimard, hope I pronounced that correctly, and Kenny (laughs) Williams. So what is the sound that you've built up? I know a lot of bands go through a lot of personnel changes. Have you guys been pretty consistent for the last few years? Yep, we have been the same group of people from from the, uh, the – well, you know what? Actually, that's not true. We we had a keyboard player uh, for our first year that's no longer with us before we brought Kenny on. Um, but other than that, it's been the same group. Because that's pretty special because, you know, a band is a lot different than – you know, you being, you know, solo, everyone talks about, well, who is it, Beyonce? I don't know why she, she has, she's got, you know, <laughs> this team of producers and writers and, you know, all that, and she puts out a good sound, but, you know, for a band, and it's and it's also still kind of different, you know, when a woman fronts a band, it was kind of like Blondie, you know, Debbie Harry, <laughs> they're all single. Is it is it her or is it the band? You know, there's always like this confusion. But it seems like with you guys, you you are pretty good at presenting yourself. That you're this cohesive band. You're writing music together. I mean, what's the chemistry and input? I mean, are you a big songwriter too? Um, it's definitely it's a, a package deal, 100. Um, percent And it's all very collaborative. We all write songs. Um, usually we're sitting in the studio and the guys will come up with a melody of some kind and they, they do all of the musical, um, all of the musical aspect. And then I put the words on at the end. Okay. So you're into the lyrics. You're a lyricist. Yes, indeed. So, so what is your favorite song that you wrote on the under the weather album? Oh, that's a good question. I think lyrically, my favorite is Tarot. Um, it's kind of a maybe a, a B-side, uh, if you will, but it, it kind of brings me back to my roots a little bit because when I was 15, 16, and first started writing songs, they were always about characters. They were never about myself because I had definitely not lived enough life yet to have any real you know, experiences to draw from to write about. So, and that one is about a character as well. It's uh, about a man who falls in love with a fortune teller and his uh, his trials and tribulations that come along with that. You know, you have a concept video called What If I, which was kind of cool because, you know, a lot of the videos I saw out there were um, performance videos, you know, live on stage. But this one seemed to have, you know, a real concept to it and some pretty – kind of cool lyrics. Was this something you felt pretty passionate about? You know, the, I wish people could see this while we talk about it, but it's, you know, you, you're Mm -hmm. walking down the sidewalk, your refrain of, you know, what if I, it sounded like a very expressive, like this is really expressing something that you held dearly. Yeah, no, it, um, it started off, you know, some, some songs lyrically come, 
easier than others. And this one was presenting some challenges for me. I was struggling to come up with a melody that worked, that was interesting, and really with a subject matter that was interesting as well. And I was looking at our drummer, and we were trying to figure it out. And he said, you know, it sounds like a fight. It sounds like a fight between a couple, really. And that's kind of where uh, where the song went from there. It's definitely a, a fight that everyone has probably had with their person at some point. And it's just kind of going back and forth between two people saying, you know, I'm right or I'm right. And you're, you're not enough or you're this. But um, I, I think they they come to a, a a mutual, you know, resolution at the end that it's it's going to be okay. Now, what songwriters have influenced you the most so far? Oh, um, I would say, I don't know. Are you, are you, are you, well, you seem so so young, probably compared to me, but, you know, I was thinking of the classic singer-songwriters, you know, Joni Mitchell and Carly Simon and Carol King. Like, who are the modern sure. equivalents for your generation of the, the singer-songwriter? Oh, gosh, I don't know. You know, for me, a lot of my influences are, um, I listen to a lot of progressive rock, so Kansas, Yes, uh, Styx. Um, I also love some, like, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, Neil Young, Harry Chapin, and I also listen to, maybe a little embarrassingly, but I listen to a lot of Broadway. So those are kind of my personal influences. Oh, interesting. Uh, Yeah, I can see with the, because you really belt I can see you even singing Wicked or some of that kind of Broadway. <laughs> oh, thank you. That's a, a very big compliment. <laughs> well, how about in the 90s? Were you swept up, like, in the whole Alanis Morissette? No, not so much. I only recently started listening to her, actually. Um, I, I don't – I'm kind of uninteresting in terms of modern influences. I really don't listen to a whole lot of new people. Well, I thought it was interesting that you covered What I Am by Edie Brickell and the New Bohemians. Yeah, that was one of the first uh, covers that we ever did, actually. And you guys did a really unique arrangement of it. This was not like a cookie-cutter version. You guys really, I'm trying to think of what you did to that arrangement, but you really made it your own on that. Well, thank you. Yeah, you know, it. it's one thing to just, you know, kind of mundanely go through the motions and cover the song exactly the way that it was originally done. And there's nothing wrong with that, but I think there's also something really special about, especially an original act where it's hard enough to get people to trust you on your original material. You know, I think it, it, um, it's cool for the audience to hear maybe a, a different approach or a different version of songs that they know, but still you get to know the band that way, you know, through a little bit of a different version. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, you know, really important because, you know, you guys are an original band. But one see, uh, one trend I see is on YouTube, even established people, they're coming back to do more covers of their favorite songs. And a lot of times it's, you know, what's currently popular to say, hey, what's stopping me from just, you know, grabbing my guitar and doing an acoustic version of my favorite song right now? I mean, is that something you see going on w- with the younger generation? I think definitely. You know, it's it's a great way to get your name out there. If you do a good version of a song that people know and you get, you know, discovered that way, a lot of people kind of find their footing in this industry that way. Um, and I, I think that's how a lot of people get started is doing the covers, definitely, before they even approach originals. The, this band was a little bit different. We had a, a whole record of originals before we even thought about doing covers or playing out. So it's Definitely um, was a little bit of a different approach for us, but. Well, one video I liked is your cover of Shallow, the Lady Gaga and Bradley Cooper song. Oh, thank you. And, yeah, I know. That was great. And what was really cool is it got to show off, you know, one of the um, guys in the band. Like, like, who was that that you did the duet with? Uh, that's Jet Wolf, our guitar player. Okay, cool. So do you have more songs where you think you might, you know, do that with a band or incorporate, you know, some more of the other guys on vocals? 
Oh, definitely. Um, Kenny, our keyboard player, sings backups for us, and Jet sings backups for me, of course, when I'm leading. But there are also quite a few songs that we do that Jet uh, is the front man for that he sings. He, we do, um, you know, Kid Rock's All Summer Long. We do Living in the City by the John Butler Trio. So he has a, a handful of solo ones in there, too. Mm-hmm. Because I think with, you know, what you guys are doing, you're definitely creating your own sound. But I think what's neat about covering songs that you love is that kind of contributes or, or refines your sound a little bit. Like, hey, you know, maybe I do like that country influence. Let's put that in this cover. Are you finding that even though you've got an established sound, do you feel like you guys are still forging a signature sound? I I think... Yeah, I think we definitely are always learning. You know, you they say you learn something new every day, and that is definitely true with music. And it, it's important for us to keep, you know, kind of reaching outside of our comfort zone a little bit. Because if you just stay in the same lane for your whole career and you never branch out, you kind of plateau and you become you become tired and, you know, you can become uninteresting as a musician. So for us, it's definitely been important to keep grabbing new new covers here and there when we can that might be a little off the beaten path for us but it, it keeps us keeps us fresh keeps us you know always always learning and always developing well when you think of the classic female fronted bands you know like heart or even like you know pat benatar and her band what would be your favorite song to cover especially like in the you know, hard rocking realm like the Barracuda, you know, when you just get that chance, just, you know, dig in with, you know, a classic, you know, Janis Joplin or, I don't know, or some of the 80s groups like uh, Lita Ford, what would you love mm. to cover? Um, well, honestly, we're we're doing one right now. We're working on a, some Carrie Underwood, which I'm not super into the, the country scene, but it's a really fun song. Um, you know, it just kind of, it gives me a little bit of a showcase and lets me have a little bit of fun. And I know we've talked about it already, but Barracuda is just one of my favorites. It's so much fun for me to wail that one out every night on stage. Well, did you see a video online? It was uh, Winona Judd when she got to perform. Um, what, what Heart song was it? It was just something really amazing. I think she performed with Heart. And it's funny how, you know, country and rockers, there's such a a cross energy there. Rockers want to do country. Country people want to do rock. Sheryl Crow working with Kid Rock. Who would be (laughs) your, like, dream collaboration either to bring on as a vocalist or, you know, know, who, who would you love to see the band do a collaboration with? Hmm. Well... That's a tough one. Gosh. Um, one of my favorite front men is Ronnie Platt, the new uh, lead singer for Kansas. I would just about okay. fail to get to sing with him or uh, Ann Wilson. I've been lucky enough to see both of them actually in concert. Uh, Ann Wilson once and Ronnie and Kansas a handful of times. Um, so those those are the two that I probably would say. Because Kansas, they've they've had quite the career. It seems like a lot of these legacy bands, you know, end up going through a lot more personnel changes, you know, 40 years down the line. Would you sure. like to open for them? Do you think that's like, you know, the Kansas fan base? Do you think that would be a good fan base to introduce your music to? Because it seems like a springboard, you know, for the big time yeah. is, you know, who you open for. So who would like be your dream opening bands or I think, who would you uh, like think, to tour with I think Kansas would be cool um, I think you know because a lot of their influences are similar if not the same to ours um, Heart would definitely be another one I'm trying to think maybe like an Atlanta rhythm section or uh, Ambrosia would be really really cool too you know who was really I don't know that they would work together well but uh we saw Judas Priest not too long ago, and man, oh man, are they still killing it? They they would be really fun to work with too. Oh yeah, you know your stuff. 
it's funny. It, it sounds like you're more into '70s rock than you are into, you know, stuff from you know the past twenty years. Yeah, you've got me pegged with that one. I like that. Well, there was such a cool explosion, especially Heart. So much came together. You know, when you think of, you know, female-fronted rock bands. You know, we talked about Debbie Harry, Blondie, and all that. Who is your all-time favorite female rock vocalist? I I think Ann Wilson. And, you know, Nancy's got a great voice, too. Um, But just just off the top of my head, Ann Wilson, I love her texture. I think that just some of the things that she does, you know, I respect her so much because she goes places that I would never think to go, and I love that because it always keeps me on my toes and learning something new. Mhm. And how about a uh, Melissa Etheridge? You know, I, you're gonna hate me, but I'm not super familiar with her. Okay. So I thought she carried some of that rain. I mean, there's only one and only Ann Wilson, but Melissa. You know, if you think of the the belters and you know just the powerful performing, just that presence. And uh, sure. how about um. Um, oh, what was that? We were talking about Janis Joplin. Has she inspired you? A little bit, yeah. I, I like um, I like some of her, her deeper tracks. Mm-hmm. So for the people that want to look up more of your stuff, I want to make sure you know, before we're done here, we're going to wrap up in a little bit, but uh, I've been talking about all these great videos that you guys have. Where is the best place online for people to seek out some of your videos? Uh, Everything is very well centralized, thanks to our amazing manager, uh, on our website, graymusic.com. And that's G-R-E-Y-E music.com. Cool. So that's kind of the one stop where they can find links to your other sites and where to buy your music and all that. Yes, indeed. Yep, our YouTube, I think all of our videos are up there. Uh, if not, a link to our YouTube channel and Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can buy our CDs on there, find out when we're playing next and where. It's it's all there. Yeah, it sounds like you're playing lots of gigs for the rest of the summer in your area. Mm-hmm. Very busy. Always got to stay busy. Okay, cool. So into, into the uh, fall, they, they can see your performance schedule. Now, this is what what I find so charming of everything you've done is that you have reached the top 40 charts in the Netherlands. Yes. <laughs> How did you guys become popular in the Netherlands? Uh, we got a download from uh, the guy who owns that station. His name is Peter. He's wonderful. Uh, or he may not own it. He may just be one of the presenters for it, but I digress. Um, we got a download through one of our distributors from that station and he just really liked the material. He loved what he saw and what he heard. And we were on there for, I think, 16 weeks. We were on their charts. We topped out at number four and it it was just like, it was insane. It was so awesome. Because you always hear about people saying, oh, I'm big in Japan or, oh, you know, they, they love me in Venezuela. Are there any other just unexpected countries or places where you found some success with this last album? Definitely Europe has been very, very into it. Uh, Not only the Netherlands, but Switzerland, um, I think Italy, France, England. We had quite a few uh, hits, and that's hopefully uh, the plan for next summer. We've got a few people interested in bringing us over there, so... We'll hopefully be getting over there next year. Oh, jump on that opportunity. That'd be amazing. Oh, yeah, definitely. (laughs) And how about uh, the next album? Have you guys been writing or planning a new album? Yes, indeed. We've got, I believe, four uh, four that are tracked and finished and ready to go. And we've got a couple more to write and finish squaring things away on. But for the most part, it's, it's ready. We're excited about it. Some really cool new stuff. I think you're going to be going back up to Fame Studios in Alabama. We don't know. We may. We may try. Uh, we may try someplace else. You know, it was such an incredible experience. So it's it's hard to say. Well, 
all I can say is, and, and, and I try to be kind of neutral, but, you know, for the people listening to this, I would say start on your videos because uh, you get a real taste of what you guys are like live and very dynamic. And I just think you have just a really strong and cool voice. So I'm just hoping on your next album, you know, we get to hear your band, you know, get even more into what they do. But for your voice, you know, I want to hear some more Ann Wilson kind of rocker numbers from you. <laughs> All right, you got it. Okay, well, I wish you, you know, further success, and I will keep an eye out for you. So I really appreciate you taking the time out, Hannah, to join our show. Oh, no problem. Thank you so, so much for having me. I so appreciate it.